Wow, this is a beautiful service, and God has been honored and glorified, and man, it's exciting to see what God is doing at First Baptist West, and it's exciting to get to be a part of it, amen? And so what, what a great time we've had. Today, we're back to our children's church, so kindergarten, first and second graders, if you'll go, Miss Carrie is in the back, so you can be dismissed for children's church, kindergarten, first and second grade, you may be dismissed. As they're going, I, I, I want to mention something to you very quickly that uh, every, of course, you know, the first Sunday of every month, I do a children's church time. And so the kids come down front since we don't necessarily do children's church upstairs. And so all the kids come down front. And of course, I always have a little bulletin for them that I make up and it's got little activities on it along with uh, my outline for the older kids. And inevitably, sometimes I get a, 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 an adult who'll come to me and say, man, you give those nice bulletins to those kids and they have little dot to dots and all that cool stuff that they get to work. Why don't we ever have something? Well, folks, look at the back of your bulletin or look in your bulletin. Everybody see that little dot to dot for you? You can't complain to me anymore. And you have now five seconds to work that dot to dot. And I'm quite hopefully, quite hopeful that you can do it in five seconds. If not, kids, reach over there and help your parents do that real quick so they can get it over with and focus back on me. <laughs> How many of you have done it? Raise your, okay, there you go. Don't be ashamed. It's all right. I, we put it there for you. There you go. We got one of the kids did it. See, they're happy. All right. Now you have had an activity for church. It's time to focus again. Amen. All right. Man, it's great to, to be able to, to just share things with you and enjoy being here together. Amen. I, this, this ought to be a fun time. This ought to be an exciting time because we're actually worshiping a risen Savior. Amen. And so today we're going to continue on with the series of messages that God laid on my heart for the month of January entitled A New Beginning. Today what I want to look at is in the book of Acts chapter 2. 41 through 47, and that's where we're going to read, and the title of my message today would be Making a Connection, Making a Connection with Each Other, and that, my friend, we're going to see today the outline for a growing church, and I don't necessarily mean a church growing in number, which is, is great if that's taking place, and God is bringing people, and God is saving people. That's what we want to see, an increase in number by God bringing into the kingdom new believers. Amen? Let me try to say that again. We want to see the growth of a church by God bringing new believers into the kingdom. Amen. That's what we're about. Amen? We're about seeing people saved. We're about seeing lives change. As a matter of fact, that again is our vision statement that's, that we go by all the time. Remember what the first part of our vision statement is? Is love what? Love God. What's the second one? Love people. Amen? Third one? See lives changed. That's what we ought to be doing. We want to see lives being changed. So we're going to look at the outline of that today. Acts chapter 2, verse 41 through 47. Let's go ahead and stand in honor of reading God's word this morning. The Bible says, Then those who gladly received his word were baptized on the day. About 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to just be in, in, in here to experience this time. And Father, might you continue to speak to our heart. And God, I pray that this message is not my message, but yours. I pray these will not be my words, but they'll be yours. 
And Father, I pray that the response of the people would be as you desire for it to be. And Father, we give you praise, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. Today, with making a connection, this thought that I want us to have is this. The church should foster a sense of connection and community for its members. Amen? Because one of the things that I see that's missing in our society today is people connecting to each other. Oh, now I hear a lot of people say, well, I'm connected. I got 150 friends on Facebook. I'm connected. I got 300 followers, and I'm following 500. Well, I'm connected. No, not, my friends, listen to me. That's a lie about being connected, amen? That's really not what being connected is all about. Being connected is that we share in each other's lives. And, and there is something missing in our society with this connect and I, connection idea. But what bothers me is it is also now seeping into the church. And we see so often that we are being satisfied by a surface level connection and we think that's what it's all about but God is showing us that if we as a church are going to be as effective as we're supposed to be that my friends listen we are going to have to get connected we look in this text and there's a key phrase that stood out to me as God laid this text on my heart to even preach from that I've never really focused on I focused on a lot of other things in this text but one of the things that I saw that would help us out here is that they, they came to the temple, they had their worship time, but here's the thing, it didn't end there. Their connection didn't end in the worship. It says they continued after the worship, they continued where? House to house. They, they broke it from the big group of the temple down to what we now call small groups. And they went and they fellowshiped. They went house to house. And as a result of that, as a result of those people truly being connected, God was able to let them be a light to the world. People saw that and said, man, that's what I want to be a part of. And as a result of that, we see that God added daily to that church people being saved. My friends, wouldn't that be an amazing thing to be a, a part of a church where daily people are being saved? Okay, one more time. Put away the dot to dot. It should be over with by now. You should have finished it. But wouldn't it be great to be a part of a church where God is adding daily to that church people being saved? Amen. Yes, amen. That's what we're about. That's why we're here. And so we wanna, I want to look at a couple things very quickly, though. Uh, very quickly here. The first thing is that I want you to understand that this worship is not a connect group. This is not how we connect to each other. As a matter of fact, I hear people, when they maybe leave the church and go finding another place, and I always try to visit because, man, I, I want to make sure that everything is okay, that we're still good and, and that there wasn't a problem. And, and inevitably what I hear a lot of times is people say, well, pastor, I just w went somewhere else because I just didn't feel connected to the group. I didn't feel a connection. And I asked them, I said, when did you attend? What, what part of us did you get to be a part of? Well, I was in the worship service all the time, and I just never felt a part. And my response is, this is not the connect time. This is, because listen, this worship is not designed for that purpose. We're not designed here today, in this hour and five minutes or so that we're going to be here, we didn't design any of this to connect us. You know why? Because this church is designed to do, this service is designed to do something other than connect us. This service is designed to be in His presence. This service was designed for us to come together into this room as in they were getting together in their large group. This was to gather us together to be in God's presence right here. But also not only to be in his presence, but this was to bring him honor. Man, when we, when we sing, man, we should have been singing. I've told you, we shouldn't be singing about God today. We should be singing to him. 
We should be singing, lifting up our voices to him instead of just sitting there and staring at the words on the screen. Man, we ought to be singing because, man, we're honoring God by, by these words. Man, when, when we baptized Andrea just a little bit ago, man, we should have been honoring God by doing that. That's what her purpose was, was to honor God through the baptism. Whenever we listen to his word, it's honoring him. And then we respond to him in honor. So we're then to present the gospel. We're to present Jesus in an open forum. That's what worship is designed to do. And then be renewed by his word. We gather together to be renewed by us giving to him that he then in store in, in turn restores us. But in here, nowhere was it designed that we were to connect to each other. In other words, worship should be Godward, not peopleward. Everything that, that we have done in this hour, everything was toward Him. Everything. Because listen, I've shared with you so many times over the years, worship is not about us. It's not about us coming together and getting entertained. Worship is good. Worship is an amazing thing. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you're here. As a matter of fact, we worship and we're putting this on live stream so that folks at home, folks around the world can tune in with our worship. Praise God. It's an amazing thing. But everything is toward God. So if worship is where we are and that's how we're getting connected, folks, we're, First Baptist West worship isn't geared toward that. So if you're looking today to be connected to us by worshiping, you're going to be disappointed. Our focus and our prayer is that you come today and you be in God's presence in this room. That you bring him honor by singing and lifting his name up. That you hear the gospel being presented and then, man, you get renewed and ready to go out in this world and take on the world. Amen? That's what this is about. So we see when in, this text, in this little verse, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple, they did that. They did not forsake the assembling of themselves together. So God says, when it's time for worship, guess what? Come worship me. And people say, well, preacher, I can worship God on the creek bank. I can worship God out in the field. I can worship God at home. I can wor oh, you can but not like this. Not like this. Man, God does something amazing through corporate worship. Amen? And man, if you, if you can't, that's, again, that's why we put this out so people can experience it. Because worship is an amazing thing. And so we, we see that worship is a good thing, but it didn't stop there. Their, their growth, their reaching people for Jesus didn't stop at the temple. It didn't stop in the worship time. It continued daily from house to house. They had small groups. So very quickly, what I want to do is I want to talk to you very quickly about the purpose of small groups. I'm going to have to go fast here. The purpose of the small group, the reason that they went from the temple large group to house to house small group is that there, there was an intention there. Now I found these some years ago, I taught a seminar about Sunday school, and I did it in our association, I did it at our church, and I've even done it here. And it's from a seminar called Sunday School Done Right by Alan Taylor. And since then, we have tried in the last year or two to really instigate the, these, initiate these into our small group times. And the first one is this. The small group's purpose is to reach people. That's what the Sunday school is. That's what our small groups are, are do. Our discipleship groups at night. We're here to reach people. Jesus said in the book of Luke, he said that the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So we have our small groups. And in all of our small groups, there should be an intention by the leaders of that group, of that home group, or in that Sunday school class, or members in there. Your goal, my friend, is to reach people who are lost. And you can do that better in, a, in that small group. Man, you get energized here. You go in that small group and you begin to connect. And you are to reach people. But not only do you reach people, but then the second one is that we institute that, that you ought to teach people. Teach them. 
In the book of, of Matthew, we see in the Great Commission, Jesus said, there, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then he says this, Teaching them to observe all things that I've told you. Teach them. Folks, listen, it is very difficult for me in this large group to teach. It is, I can present the gospel, I can present a goal, but it's hard to teach because it's hard to teach in this many people. How many of you are teachers? Raise your hand. Oh, lot, lots of teachers. All right, good. Your goal, now listen, I know each one of you feel that, boy, it'd be nice if you had a small, a small classroom. Amen? Amen? You want small, small amounts of people in your room. And I know it's, I, listen, I know most of y'all. And it's not because you're lazy. It's because you know that the fewer people you have, fewer students you have in your classroom, the more focused you can give them. Amen? And that's why you want small, because you can teach them. You can focus on them. Listen, that's what we're to be teaching. That's why we have small groups, so that you can teach them. Man, I remember there were times I had in my math classes, man, sometimes I'd have... 35 or 36 students in my math class folks that's tough that's tough because i i I want you to understand y'all might not get this but there's a whole lot of people that don't understand math huh a lot of people don't get it and so i would have to spend time not standing in front of the class teaching math a lot of my teaching was done by going to the individuals to help them. And by that, if I had 36 students that needed help, it was going to be hard for me to get to every student. So we desire small classes so that I can focus more on the individuals. Folks, it's very difficult for me as the pastor to focus on the 400 people that attend First Baptist West. That's why we have deacons and, and we have uh, we, we, we have deacons and we have yoke fellow because they're supposed to be in that. That's their small group, if you will. Because here's the third thing that we do. In our small groups, they're designed to minister to people. Proverbs 27, 23 says this, Be diligent to know the state of your flocks and attend to your herds. It's quite difficult, and the bigger the church gets the more difficult it is for the pastor to oversee all of it. Not because I'm lazy. I hope you don't think I'm lazy. But it's really hard to get around to 400 people. So we have deacons and yoke fellow. Deacons, can, may, may, I, may I talk to you specifically for just a moment? Yoke fellow, may I speak to you for just a moment? Do you realize that the family groups we give you, that you're assigned to, do you realize, deacons, those are your flock? That's your flock. You're to observe and you're to be diligent to know the state of them. How do you know the state of them? Connect to them, know them, talk to them. Sunday school teacher, do you know that your Sunday school class is your flock? You as a Sunday school teacher need to be diligent to minister to them. To, how do you know that? By, by being in contact with them. Seeking out what's going on in their lives. That's why we've narrowed it down from 400 to 10, 15, 20. So it's easier to do that. Because we need to be diligent to our people. We need to minister. There are needs in our church. And we break it down into small groups so that they would know. In other words, we are to be relational. Our small groups are to be relational. To come together, to get to know each other, to help one another. And it has to be more than just that time that we're together for Sunday morning. When we do this outline, the Bible says that the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Now, I shared with you at the beginning of, of last, or in part of the sermon last week, or the new beginnings, that over this year, that we're going to talk about some things about getting you out of your comfort zone. All right? Here we go. New beginning. I'm not going to challenge you 
I'm not going to challenge anyone watching because challenges are this. It's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a come to you and tell you, here's a goal, try to achieve it. And you either achieve it or you fail. Well, I'm not going to challenge anybody. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to encourage you to do this. A new beginning of connection. A new beginning for First Baptist West. If you're here today, or if you're watching this, if you're here, I want to challenge you to get connected. And here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to encourage you to join a small group. If you really want to get connected, if you really want to be a part of what's going on at First Baptist West, I'm going to encourage you to be a part of a small group. And we have all sorts of small groups. Man, we, have, we just had a small group time with our Sunday school classes. We have again tonight some discipleship classes that we're going to be taking, small groups. We have, we have a group that's already going in the 2-7 Bible study. They're, they're a small group already. They've, they're in the book two. They start book two tonight. But we also have, if you say, well, man, I'd like to be in a part of something like that. Well, guess what? I got news for you. We got book one starting over with Barry tonight. A 2-7 discipleship. Man, it's an amazing study. And you want to talk about getting connected? Ooh, you're going to get connected in that one because, man, you're going to talk. You're going to talk about verses. You're going to learn memory verses. You're going to get to be a part of it. As a matter of fact, we've taught those. I've taught those. My wife and I have taught those in our house over the last several years. But here's the thing that you need to know about that small group. That small group will not stay together from now on. That small group goes through the books once the book's over. And that's what I told everybody when we started our Bible study at home. I said, now listen, one thing you got to know is this, this, this is not a Bible study that we're going to keep forever. As a matter of fact, when we get through with this Bible study, there's going to be the last day. I'm going to look at you and go, man, it's been great. I've got to know you well. We love each other. We're excited. We've grown. But it's over. Because my intent was for them then to take what we did in those books to guess what? Go out and start their own small groups. And they're doing that. We have that happening. Even though we got excited, even though we loved each other. As a matter of fact, in our last, last one we did in our home, and it happened every time we did one, man, every group said, boy, I'm going to miss coming here. I said, yeah, I know, I'm going to miss you. But guess what? In a couple weeks, I'm going to have a new group coming. And in a couple of weeks, you should have a new group coming to you. That's ministry. Same thing happens in our small groups, in our Sunday schools. Our desire is for them to grow. Our desire is for them to, to spread out. So I want to encourage you today, join a small group. Man, we got small groups. We got on Wednesday night, we have small groups. On Wednesday night, we have our youth study. We have, we have a wanna. Man, that's a great small group. They break them down into smaller groups. So one is on Wednesday night. We also have a men's Bible study that's kicking back up on Wednesday night. We have a ladies' Bible study. Man, I want to encourage you. You want to get connected. Man, I'm telling you what, the last semester, we, there were about 20 of us guys in that Bible study. Man, it was an amazing group. God did some good stuff. Mm, so you, join. Join a small group. In your bulletin, online, there's a whole list of small groups that we have. Join one. Going to get you even more uncomfortable. i got to hurry. I'm running out of time. Start a small group. <gasps> Start one. Man, if God's laying on your heart, man, I want to be a part of it. If you've done a 2-7 group or, or you're, in, you're sitting in a Sunday school class and you say, man, God is laying on my heart to, to step out. Man, it's our goal. I'll be honest with you. It's been our goal every year to start a couple of new Bible studies every, every Sunday school. We want to start two new classes. We haven't reached it, but we're wanting to. As a matter of fact, that ought to be the goal of every Sunday school teacher. The goal of every Sunday school teacher is to keep your class to about 10 or 15 and take some. And if it grows up, take a few out and say, hey, go, man, you have to stay a part of us, but we want you to connect with other groups. Get, start your own small group. Now, I know that's scary terms, folks, but I told you, I'm going to ask you to step out of your comfort zone this year. Jesus had 12. He had a whole lot of followers, but he had 12. Here it says they went from house to house. Folks, they can't, unless your house is really huge, you're not going to get a whole lot of people from house to house. So I want to, I want to encourage you to start a small group. Thirdly, fellowship together fellowship they went from house to house breaking bread gladly fellowshipping together 
Man, that's where we're going to grow. Man, when we begin to fellowship, and we have opportunities of fellowship, man, we try all the time to have new opportunities of fellowship at First Baptist West, just times that we can get together. Man, we joke tonight, we have our small groups, but you know what we're going to do before our small groups? Man, guess what? Will snacks are back. Amen? If you've never had a will snack, man, you need to show up about, oh, what time we start, Barry? But 5.45, you show up and, man, you will be blessed by will snacks. Amen? We have other opportunities that we bring our groups together. We have opportunities. We encourage our Sunday school small groups, our other fellowship groups. Get together. Not just on Sunday morning. Get together. Fellowship. Grow in knowing each other. Man, when you grow to know each other, man, you're going to love each other. When you love each other, you're going to help each other. When you help each other, you're going to encourage each other. And man, when you start doing that, I'm telling you, people are going to watch. And when you bring them into your small group, they're going to go, whoa, this is what I've been looking for. This is it. This is what's been missing out of my life. That's what happened in the book of Acts. So we have an outline. Now listen, what I feel so good about was this outline I just gave you, this isn't my outline. I didn't make this thing up. I didn't sit in my office and say, God, give me a divine revelation on what I can do that's brand new to teach my church what to do. No, listen to me. Here's the outline. This is his outline, not mine. I'm telling you, his outline for for growing is going to be a whole lot better than mine anyways. But folks, please... Don't fall into that trap that I believe Satan is setting for our world and I believe he's setting for the church. When we say, I don't need to be a part of that. This is fine for me right here. Every now and then. Now listen, man, Satan's lying to you. Satan's lying. Man, we need to assemble ourselves together. Man, we need to lift up his name and praise his name on a daily, regular basis, man. Daily we need to have a personal time with, with you and Jesus with me and Jesus every day. Man, we need to be as part of a small group. And you want to get connected to First Baptist West. If you want to get connected wherever you are, it's going to be through the small group time. A new beginning. A new beginning. Starting now. And here's what's going to happen when we get faithful and we get committed to this right here. God will add daily to the church those who are being saved don't believe me pray about it and try it and see what god's going to do this church ought to foster an attitude and a sense of connection and community for all of us shame on us if we don't do that And we can't expect to love God, love people, and see lives change without connecting to the people. Connecting together. And lifting up the name of Jesus. Let me pray with you. Father, as we come this morning, Lord, we just thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for watching over us today. And God, I pray that if there's someone here, someone watching Lord, that they don't have a personal relationship with you, that, God, they would understand more than anything else. They need you. And the Father, they can have peace, they can have comfort, they can have everlasting life if they'll just call upon your name this morning. And, Father, maybe there's someone here today, maybe, Lord, that their life, they're struggling right now. Lord, things are difficult for them. I ask, God, that today you be an encouragement to them. As we recommit ourselves to you, Lord, as we surrender back over to you and say, Lord, here I am. And Father, I pray that you would encourage us to have a new beginning with this connecting idea, to be connected. Even though we may be thinking we don't really need it, Lord, that's that's what you have designed us to be, is to be connected to people. And Father, I pray that you would encourage people today to be a part of a small group 
that's teaching Jesus, that's reaching people, and God, they're ministering to the lives of others. God, let that be who we are today. My friend, in just a moment, we're going to stand and we're going to enter back into time of praise and worship. But man, if your heart is hurting, maybe, maybe you feel that emptiness today. Maybe you feel that, that disconnected. Well, here's an opportunity for you to call on Jesus' name and be saved today. But maybe there just needs to be a recommitment in your life to say, God, I surrender back to you all, of, all that I am. God, I surrender to you today. In just a moment, we're going to enter in time of praise and worship. We're going to sing some more. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. But if you need to come, we'll have people right here that'll, that'll help you, be an encouragement to you. Or just pray right there where you are. God, work in my life today. Work in my life today. Father, hear our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask you to stand. Hi, I'm Harold Gases, pastor of First Baptist West, and I want to once again thank you uh, for joining us this morning in our worship time, and as always, hope that God was able to uh, speak to you during our time and that you were able to enjoy our worship time with us. I would like to invite you to join us throughout the month of January as we will continue to be looking at a series called A New Beginning, where we're going to be looking at what God has in store for us as individuals and as a church, and we would like to have you join us then. A quick update on some things is that on January 19th, we will be having a special service where we're going to be observing a sanctity of human life, where we're going to be celebrating life and how we are to protect the life. And so we hope that you'll come and be a part of that time with us. As always, we want to enjoy, uh, invite you to come and join us here live in person at First Baptist West, but if not, continue to join us here uh, on our live stream. But we just want to be a church that reaches out, and if there's anything that we can do to help you, please contact us here at First Baptist West and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. But remember, First Baptist West is a place where we love God, love people, and we really want to see lives change.